<laughs> Previously on Aliens 3. Ripley kills the Xenocal hybrid and unaligns herself in molten light. What did you think about this movie, Aliens 4? Resurrection? Mm -hmm. Resurrection. Uh, Alien Resurrection. I don't think there's a 4 in it. I think it's just Alien Resurrection. Each Okay. I give it a 5 out of 10 overall. Uh, I, I like how each Alien movie, 1, 2, 3, and 4, are a unique addition <laughs> to the franchise. Um, I felt like this was the one that didn't live up to its potential the most, so I give it a knock it down pretty far to a 5 out of 10. Uh, the storyline felt forced. I mean, they kind of had to force it for to get Ripley back into the game. Uh, but there's a lot of other things that felt pretty forced about the, uh, the story. Uh, it felt like it had to go bigger and weirder and stranger for no real reason. That kind of rubbed me the wrong way. I felt like this could have been a great 90s addition with a unique take on the Alien franchise, but just kind of fell flat in my opinion. What do you think? It fell flat in a comedic 90s way. I gave it a 7 out of 10. That's real good for me. So there are some fantastic sci-fi concepts, like cloning and then having a genetic memory plus interspecies hybrids, and then also the autons, which we saw just a very little bit about. The second generation robots made by other robots. Fantastic sci-fi ideas. Well beyond the movie, there's cool things to just think about. Um, there was, however, this, this weird corny dialogue and continuity errors and unexplained just abilities that people had. Um, there was dramatic, but also illogical actions that, that people did. And so maybe that's the 90s era. It was 1997. Maybe it's the 90s era thing. Things were just kind of a little silly back then. Um, but or maybe it's just because it was a summer blockbuster. So, I mean, that's as long as it's fun, people are butts in the seats. Um, the set design. Set design and practical, practical effects are 10 out of 10. This is the bread and butter Aliens franchise. It gives you that real heebie-jeebie feelings. Um, and additionally, the Ripley's movements. Ripley's movements were super weird. The way she like crawled around the floor, it, it really felt like she had some alien in her brain. Um, a plus acting, as always. She always brings it. Um, the hybrid, the human you know, hybrid towards the end. Incredible. And yeah, absolutely incredible. Like it's creepy and weird and unhuman, but also human. And, and when it made facial expressions, it felt, it felt like a really disappointed kid. And I actually wanted to be like, oh, back, pat it on his back, take care of it. It was excellent, excellent human Xeno hybrid. And then, and it has one of the most iconic deaths in all of sci-fi, being like sucked through a hole into the vacuum of space and just ripped apart. Just iconic, absolutely iconic in the history of sci-fi. Seven out of 10, good movie. You know, I do make a point. There is a lot of uh, cool sci-fi elements to this, which makes it more frustrating for me because I felt like it could have been great. Um, there's so much there. I don't know. It's Pros like, and cons. Let's yeah, talk about it. Let's talk about it. Okay. So this is the setting of Alien Resurrection, the USM Auriga. It's a medical research vessel vessel of the United Systems Military. We're not really sure what the United Systems Military is other than some Earth thing, former Earth thing, because I think Earth is not in good shape. Right. Um, I assume it's all of our colonies, our various star systems it, that we it, occupy. It must be, yeah. Uh, so it's actually it actually has this huge feel to it, the Auriga, but actually not that many people. 42 mm. enlisted, seven science officers, okay. Mm. And then this is the ship that the, the Betty that comes in with the crew and the stolen cryo sleeping people. Uh, and it's just a commercial freighter, only six people on board, makes sense. Unregistered, okay. Yeah, they're kind of drifting in between the worlds. They kind of do whatever they want. Mm -hmm. The Eureka's the one on the bottom left, is that right? And then they dock with the one on the top right? So I think this is the Eureka, right? Oh, sorry, what did it? Yeah, so the bottom left is, is Betty. This is Betty point. down here, and then this is Eureka, yeah. Very cool. So for, because of the perspective, they look about the same size, but actually the Riga's far away. It's huge. It's huge, huge, huge ship. Yeah. yeah. Very cool. So at, at the beginning of the movie, they see, you see Ripley crawling out of this kind of like weave cocoon thing. And and I think it's something to do with a medical, but it's like a medical bag, which we only really mm -hmm. see on corpses. But here she is like coming out of it like a cocoon, like a husk, like breaking out of it. Mm -hmm. uh, what, 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 is, what is this? I had always interpreted this as once she was done being grown in one of those tubes, uh, I guess she had this cocoon around her that she had to bust out of. Uh, and then she was finally open to the world. So it's like almost giving birth through this cocoon I, or being birthing herself through the cocoon. I don't know why it's necessary. 
Are you, are you saying that she's like alieny, and then in some part of her body made this cocoon? Or I, I thought the scientists or the medical people wrapped her up in it for like some medical reason, but then they also like have her on the ground. Like, <laughs> oh, yeah. So to me, it felt like an essential part of the medical procedure for growing. But maybe it's an essential part of the medical procedure for growing Ripley because she has alien DNA in her. Curious. Why they just dump her on the cold floor, I don't know. Why she doesn't do this inside a tube, I'm not sure. Yeah, but her bed. It certainly is creepy when she does it. Mm. Uh, an interesting thing is that Ripley has memories. She's a clone, and normally the clones, as we know it in the modern world, it's just a, like a twin. But there's no memories formed yet. Right. Ripley has memories. Let's listen. She's operating at a completely adult capacity. Eight. What about her memories? There are gaps, some degree of synaptic dissonance. It has connective difficulties caused by a biochemical imbalance causing emotional autism. Why does it have memories? Well, I'm guessing, but inherited memories passed down generationally at a genetic level by the aliens like its strength. An unexpected benefit from the genetic crossing. So we've talked about the alien or xenomorph DNA being this really adaptable type of, even if it is DNA, they have some sort of genetic code mm -hmm. that's super adaptable. It can inject itself into a cow and a dog and a human and potentially other extraterrestrial beings out there. Um, and so each time it has to adapt its DNA in a certain way. And, and every time it still comes out absolutely lethal, absolutely combat mm -hmm. effective. Fantastic. Right. And so somehow even with the host, it's grabbing onto memories as well. Incredible. Right. Super cool idea. Yeah. Super cool idea. In fact, it's so cool. You probably should do medical research on it just to make sure you're not blindsided by a xenomorph. Yep. Good luck getting funding, but yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah. Burke tried and he got... Also, <laughs> why is the colonel or whatever this guy is so... His personality is interesting. Why does it have memories? <laughs> He's so weird. <laughs> Can you imagine in a, him in a meeting with like actual like generals now? He'd mm -hmm. just be absolute goofball. Goofball in the yeah. meeting. He's the, yeah, he's the comic relief for the military. But maybe, he's the top dog. He's the top dog comic relief. Maybe he's like a weird general and they're just like, go to the Auriga. Go do that <laughs> thing. That's right. There's only 46 <laughs> enlisted. Go be in charge of them. Go be in charge of that. He's yeah, that's so right. He's a three-star general in charge of 46 enlisted. And only what? one ship? Whoa. Yeah, that's weird. That's yeah, he's weird. super demoted. Why does it have memories? Because <laughs> he's a goofer, goofball. Weird. Also interesting that clip, the one scientist refers to Ripley as she. That's this guy. Uh -huh. And the other one says it. It. Okay. Which oh, I didn't take a picture. Okay. So it's like, even amongst them, they also have different levels of mm -hmm. assigning how human this person is. And it's consistent with this guy wanting to like, he's like humanizing everything. No matter how creepy and gooey and so disgusting. Creepy. He's like, I love it. <laughs> <laughs> Everything looks like a human. Yeah. Super weird. Yeah, let's, uh, let's listen to the explanation for Ripley's resurrection. We used blood samples from Fiori 16 on ice. We've remade you. We cloned you. So we had some questions about this. Where did they find the DNA samples for Ripley? He says on Fiori 16, which is the prison planet that she escaped from and killed herself in. But where would the DNA samples be on ice? I, I don't know. So my thought was after the event of the of the combat in the prison, then then USM people went in and gathered blood samples from around and then froze them. And then if they didn't know what to do with them at the time, they're just like, I don't know, freeze them, freeze them. Maybe we'll figure out mm -hmm. science in the future. That was my hunch. Okay. Because it couldn't have been on the dropship because that was blown to shit. Oh, no. And certainly the prison, like the doctor that Ripley meets, isn't point. isn't going to freeze... Maybe, maybe, maybe that's part of their protocol at this mm -hmm. stage in time in society that just like take right. a blood sample from everyone, just freeze it, whatever. Mm -hmm. That's standard procedure. Right. Maybe. But I think most plausible is what you're saying. Like that team that came down on the Fury 16 and went to go capture Ripley failed because she killed herself. Uh, somehow was able to find samples and freeze them. And people were blood bleeding. Yeah. I guess. Oh, oh also the her, her drop pod, her her like lifeboat vessel. That scanned her to see that the alien is inside. Yeah. That could also have blood samples from, I don't know, I guess, okay. whenever she got in the first time. Right, and as long as that team goes and gets them, then maybe... Got it. We got DNA? We got DNA, yeah. We used blood samples from Fiori 16 on ice. We've remade you. We cloned you. And it's, mm -hmm. 
It's a clone with memories. Crazy. So this entire series has been following Wayland Yutani. Let's listen to them. What happened to them? Everyone in the company will die. Wayland Yutani. Ripley A's former employers. Terran growth conglomerate. I think you will find that uh, things have changed a great deal since your time. I doubt that. It's the United Systems military, not some greedy corporation. You're still going to die. <laughs> Yeah, interesting that Whalen Yutani was this like evil overlord company in the alien universe, but now is totally kaput. Yeah, they lost control of whatever they're doing. I heard it just now. He said he said that it was a Terran growth conglomerate. Mm -hmm. So that seems consistent with where we've seen Whalen Yutani is that they're always mm -hmm. like looking for expansion. Mm -hmm. So maybe humans now have gotten to a point where they're no longer looking for expansion. And so then Whalen Yutani, a growth and expansion mm -hmm. company, they went by the wayside. Maybe. I guess there's also the possibility that Wayland Yutani went out of business, but a s other corporations came out in their place, and so it's really Wayland Yutani's gone, but it's still the same corporate conglomerate oh, heck. setup. Maybe if we're if we're willing to speculate, then Wayland Yutani may still be in power. They just changed as a as a different name, more like a <laughs> PR thing, right? That's yeah, right. Yeah, like they spin off a company, and that grows. Right. Wayland Yutani falls, right. but it's now not Wayland Yutani. Yeah. But, but it is. Yeah, yeah. I guess it could be also like the military has actually taken over. Yeah, could be. Hmm. Yeah. It could be after all these expansions and wars and battles and and the the veterans rose up and then formed the new new society. Yeah, that could be cool. There's a lot of potential storylines here. It's kind of cool. This was an interesting scene. So this is the commander of Ariga. And this is the commander, I guess the leader, I don't know what his official the title captain. is, Yeah, of the Betty. And he stole the people from cryosleep so that the captain could do the experiments. And he pays them cash money. Cash money. And they do say that's kind of weird. I guess if you're going through official channels in the future, you're not going to be able to use cash. So I guess this implies there's a significant black market. Right. Because I, I'm guessing, I'm filling in a little bit of blanks here, that in the future, the official channels, you get your cards, you got your ID mm -hmm. chip, something like that, and then electronic, mm -hmm. no problem, done. But if you're doing black market stuff, you don't want to attract, so cash is still king. Cash is still king, yeah. Also, they got this super cool drink. I I, I want mm -hmm. this. So they ha they drink whiskey, maybe mm -hmm. bourbon, it's hard to tell. Yeah. But it comes out as a, as, as a sealed package, a solid cube, mm -hmm. which you then dump in a cup. Dump in a cup. Which then... You blast with the laser, mm -hmm. and by blasting with the laser, it liquefies the shrink. Super mm -hmm. portable. Right, super portable, super transportable, super, super stable. Packageable, yeah. Yeah, it doesn't go stale. It doesn't go bad. That's true. Yeah, very cool. Ooh, that'd be cool tech for the future. Mm. No more terrible what, MREs. That's right. You have like full deluxe meals. Just re liquefy it. Yeah. Boom. This is a this is an English thing. It's the correct yeah. use of Just word. like a thug guy. Who's like rough around the edges uses perfect grammar from a while, like not even good grammar. It's so perfect in our time, it's being phased out. Let's listen. You hang with us for a while, you'll find out I am not the man with whom to f with whom to fuck. With. <laughs> he's an educated guy, educated guy, yeah. he's read some books. And at this time, what is this, two, three hundred years in the future? So he's talk he's talking like somebody from five, six hundred years before his time. Ah, he reads the classics, the <laughs> classics, <laughs> I mean, which are modern day books, right. Must he must? Yeah, yeah. He's gruff on the outside, but in his room, he's, 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 he's a grammar scholar. Nazi. Yeah. Oh. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> That's why he's all on edge every all the time because right. like, people aren't using the right grammar. That's right. He's just pissed off. <laughs> Maybe this is. There's more evidence that the commander of the Riga isn't so good. Thank you for your cooperation. Oh, good job. Was, was that a sufficient check for weapons? I mean, the answer is no. <laughs> right, because he's able to smuggle in weapons, right? Right. He smuggles them in um, inside his sleeves. So this guard is like, whatever. Fine. Mm -hmm. Whatever. You're fine. Whatever. So oh, you're, you're saying the captain, uh, the, the, the general of the Ariga, the captain of the Ariga, mm -hmm. he's not a good leader because his his staff here, his, his enlisted, are really... F really phoning it in, really dialing right. it, just really not doing their hard work. Mm -hmm. And that's evident here in that they're not doing real good security checks. That's right, yeah. Okay, I okay, so. what you're saying. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Could you hands up, please, sir? What? Could you hands up, please? There are no weapons allowed on board, sir. My own recipe. He doesn't even check the thermos. 
Yeah. There could be a bomb in there. That's right. It could be a gun inside it. He's like, whatever. Whatever. General doesn't whatever. care. The guy's already walking. I didn't say okay, but he's walking. Yeah. Wanna check the chair? I, I think the answer is yes, I do want to check the chair. Look, I mean, that would be the easiest way to smuggle in a bomb. Look how much space there is in this chair. There's so many things to smuggle in. In fact, I think he actually, there's parts of this well, chair actually. that turn into a weapon. Yep. So. Want to check the chair? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, the answer is yeah. yeah. Can you imagine going to like a national, like a government facility <laughs> and then the guards are like, yeah, you're fine. Don't worry fine, about just it. Just go on in. Like, whoa, 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 whoa. Like, yeah. I, I want to know that people behind the security gate are also disarmed. I don't want to be thinking like, mm, mm. maybe they got through. Right. Like, <laughs> right, right. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Like, it, it, it damages my confidence in their competence. I agreed. Yeah. Which I guess all goes all the way to the top. That general, he's uh, not enforcing procedures right. with the enlisted people. <sighs> well, we'll see how this plays out. Uh, this is a random shot of the Auriga. Let's talk about the hallway shape here. Um, why these jutty outy things, I wonder? Yeah, weird. So it's like it's like you have a big room mm -hmm. that's a rectangle and like a normal box like we mm -hmm. have. But then you have these kind of structurally guys, these mm -hmm. these yellow. Can you can you bring? Yeah, yeah. These yeah, like those like structural or... triangles. Yeah. And then you have this this hexagon, right. which is where the door is. Um, but then also with it's like it's also ribbed, ribbed for structural stuff. Mm -hmm. So, but that means that the the largest thing you could ever fit inside this room is the diagonal across that that um, mm -hmm. the door. So why have a room that's even bigger than that? Yeah, and if you were fit, if you were pushing cargo through the room here, the shape of that is limited to a square or rectangle of that's this right. size, or like some weird shape. That would fit just through this door, but it would be such a, it's like, how many sides? It's its an octagon. Oh, octagon. With diff, like these corner bits. It's like a Battlestar Galactica cargo container. It's like a Battlestar Galactica piece of paper. Yeah. So it's very strange. Yeah. Um, very interesting design. Looks dank as hell in there. It does, yeah. Get some lights up on here. Get some dehumidifiers. That's right. Yeah, this place is going to get moldy, and you're not even going to notice. Actually, where is all that water coming from? Is that just sweat from people condensing? Oh, God. Oh, oh God. Maybe there's an alien up here dripping. Maybe there's your mom up there. Oh. Yeah, she's dressed nicely. Okay, so this guy. This guy has these guns that are attached to his arms, and they go, they like slide in and out of his sleeve mm -hmm. through this retractable, retract double actuator sure those are words and so but he, he does this punch he does this punch where he punches the guy mm -hmm. and extends the arm at the same time yeah but like does that does that actually do anything like like it's still him swinging mm -hmm. like if yeah. i had it, it does it give any extra force what does it do i mean it would hurt more because it's metal okay. but is he going to be able to swing the the metal that much harder it seems like maybe something like brass knuckles would be a simpler solution than this complex mechanism. I see. I see. So I'm I'm thinking about if he if he swings forward and the actuator shoots forward, mm -hmm. there's a force that's going this way, but there's also a force on his arm that's going this way, so those actually may not even make a difference. Really the key difference uh, of using his fist versus the metal stuff is that the fact that it's metal. So that it's harder, which means that when you get an impact, it's mm -hmm it's a faster time it's a it's a it's a shorter time than when you're when you punch something your punch, your fist has time to like compress and squeeze makes a force mm -hmm. drawn out mm, yeah so he might as well just have brass knuckles mm. yeah I mean, he also he also like conceals like firearms with this like pistol oh yeah i think right there you can see it that's yeah. a, that's a hand uh, it's a trigger guard oh, and yeah. a okay. pistol yeah yeah, so it's kind of a weird tech. And then I think he ends up dumping it because well, it's he, annoying anyway. He uses it once and then gets rid of it. <laughs> He's like, like, they, they were still usable. Why didn't he take them with him? Well, I think what my guess is he goes to like a, like some shop out on the, in the black market and this guy sells him like, hey, these cool cool gun things. He's like, zoot, zoot, and he's zoot, like, zoot, I got zoot. it. And then he finally uses it in the field and he's like, this sucks. And he just dumps them. So bad purchase by this guy. He probably even trained for a long time. Like, it's going to be so cool when he use it. He's then, then oh. it sucked. 
And, so I, yeah. and then he's like, but I got to use it. I paid a lot of money. I got to show everyone I used it. But it's also a good decision to dump. You know? Right. Sure. No sunk, sunk cost fallacy. He's like, no, no, I just got to get rid of it. It's good. But then he goes around the rest of the movie holding the guns in his hands and having occupied hands. It's true. With no holsters. No holsters. Let's look at this overly complex prison thing. So I get the need for a secure prison and isolating prisoners, or in this case, alien captives away from the people. But the maintenance and expense requirements for this thing, my God, like all these mechanisms is so complicated. Right. We got this twisty business. That's right. What's wrong with a, with a regular jail cell? That's right. And, and at this point in time, there wasn't like xenomorphs running around the, the mm -hmm. United System's um, so this, I have to assume this thing was built to for humans, mm -hmm. to, to secure humans. In which case, a regular jail cell already does that. <laughs> like you don't, you, you don't like how much maximum security do you need? Like you don't need a like hermetically sealed box. And then even then, like just make a hallway, just make a hallway, and you just right. walk down this. This looks like a room purpose built for like scientists that doesn't want to walk anywhere. <laughs> like mm -hmm. like no, let's build a rotating room that rotates around me and then brings prisoners to me. Super weird, right? Super weird. Hey, it's the future. That's true. Yeah. Honestly, I, I, I wouldn't mind working there. It seems pretty nice. Yeah. I would like a chair though, but nice. Yeah, well. I can I can bring my own, that's fine. Mm -hmm. So this is a tense scene, a tense scene where we see how strong Ripley is. A little bit flirty here with, with um this this character. And he asks her, he says, like, it's like there's other sports that we can do indoors, but what other sports might he be talking about? I mean, I think he's talking about foosball. Because mm, that is an indoor sport. Yeah, it's like really sexual. So maybe pool. Is what's the sexiest of the indoor sports? Ping pool? pong for sure. No, 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 no. It's got to be pool. Ping pong is the same. Ping sex? pong. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You get spin moves. You get big motions. You get hips bouncing around. Looks good. Okay. So he meant he wanted to play ping pong. I guess there's also indoor soccer. That's not that always looks goofy to me. Indoor soccer. Hmm. Indoor volleyball? Oh yes. Hmm. But that requires teams though. Okay, so so what's a one on one activity for, that they can do? For me, it's gotta be pool. Pool. Sounds like for you it's ping pong. Yeah. Okay. So if, if we're in his shoes. Oh, it might be table tennis. Uh what's the difference between table tennis and ping pong? Race. What? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's really race. It's table tennis is for like British. And then ping pong is for Asian people. So it's an identical game. I think so, as far as I know. I'm not a ping pong specialist. I actually I play, play volleyball and video games. Oh, okay. Okay. I guess today I learned. Yeah. <laughs> I guess the other option is f Okay. Ooh, this is cool. Okay, so this is the scene where the creepy scientist is testing the xenomorph. He has this, he like interacts with the xenomorph, see if it can do what it, it's, it, it interacts mm -hmm. with it. And the xenomorph is like, yes, I can drool. Mm -hmm. And then when things go bad, he presses this button, mm -hmm. which, which, which cools the, the xenomorph. And then one time he goes to almost touch mm -hmm. it and the xenomorph like freezes place. Mm -hmm. And so the point of the sequence is that the xenomorph is very quickly learning. So my question is, if we were to find aliens in space or on their mm -hmm. planet or they came here, would they inherently be a intelligent species or a clever species? Um, what I mean, would it be reasonable for us to do the opposite to find an alien species that are dumb? Uh, I mean, most life on Earth, I think, would not pass the intelligence test. So I think it's reasonable to believe that most life out, out there would not pass an intelligence test given by us. But I think rarely we may encounter some intelligent life. Now, would we be able to recognize that intelligence? Would this same kind of button training work on them? Uh, maybe, maybe that's a universal or maybe it's so foreign to them that they would fail. And something that's simple to them, we would be like, what the heck's going on here? Um, that's impossible. My I, gut feeling says hard yes. Hard yes, okay. Yeah, yeah, so, so, not so I, I totally agree. I totally agree that most life we find out there will be not so intelligent because mm -hmm. it's just harder to be intelligent than not intelligent. Mm -hmm. 
So passively the resistance. However, if a species is able to colonize their planet and then feel the need to leave the planet, they must be smart enough to figure out whatever they needed to do to to survive in all the environments around the Earth, just mm-hmm. like or their planet, just like we did on Earth. And they also have to be able to figure out a way to get off the planet. So that suggests to me rocketry. I, I guess it is mm-hmm. possible they could have some biological way to get off their planet. But for them to get there, for us to, to, for us to encounter them in space or for them to get to us, then I think they need to be an intelligent species. So I 100% agree. However... Did the xenomorphs invent tech or did they piggyback Good point. Good point. onto intelligent species to get around? Because they're kind of this paras- inte- they're parasitic on intelligent life, it seems like. Like they're right. hopping onto right. intelligent life's spaceships and rockets and stuff to get around. But have they actually made anything themselves? No idea. Unclear at this point. Absolutely unclear. They know how to like take over a space and build mm-hmm. a nest, but to actually build the Dursland mm-hmm. space, we haven't seen that. So this could be that that tiny percentage where you have a parasitic organism that gets into space without actually having made the tech. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. But that doesn't mean they're not intelligent, though. That's right. This this xenomorph here is figuring out things very quickly. Mm-hmm. In fact, if they're injecting their DNA and creating babies parasitically with intelligent life forms and they're absorbing that DNA into their own, then they're probably picking up intelligence along the way. Sure, right, possible. Sure. Yeah. Hmm. Hmm. The Xenos are a mysterious species. Super cool, super yeah. cool, yeah. Okay, this is a confusing scene. The, one of the soldiers gets frozen in like half a second. Thank you. Oh my god. Oh. Okay, so the heat capacity of water, which we're body, our body's made of, is pretty large. To flash freeze water, which is, we're, we're talking probably 100, 150 kilograms of body here, to do it in less than five seconds, I mean, what's going on here? If this can't be like liquid nitrogen, that'd be too slow. So the coldest material that I'm aware of is liquid helium, mm-hmm. kind of real cold, cold. But even then, because it's a liquid and it's and it's melt freezing or it's condensation temperature is mm-hmm. like four, four. Kelvin, some yeah. some real cold, then your body is actually pretty safe against it mm-hmm. by the Leiden frosting effect. Like same effect where you can shove your if your hand is wet, you can shove it into molten metal and it'll be a safe because the water phase changes into a little gas bubble around your hand and your hand's pretty safe. Here, the cryogen, the the liquid, whatever it is, would be blast out the guy, and then the, his body heat would evaporate the gas, and he may have a little safety bubble around him. And so that, this uh, that's barely happening. Um, mm-hmm. And and even if it did, it would take an enormous amount of liquid helium to to cool mm-hmm. someone down like that. So yeah. I have no idea what this chemical is, it, it or whatever this thing is, but it, it definitely froze his hand like solid down to the bone, yeah. real fast. Yeah, it got real gruesome real fast, like right there. Oof. Ugh. Ugh. Well, we don't need a lot. Okay. We don't need to see okay. that. Okay. So it must not be liquid nitrogen or liquid helium, because that would be too slow. So maybe this is some kind of chemical reaction that's super endothermic, that just like it racks with water and it's like, grab up all the energy really fast, and then he dies. Hmm. Maybe. I mean, it, there's no way it's liquid helium or nitrogen. There's no way. So from a physicist's point of view, those are the cold things that we work with, mm-hmm. um, and those th- th- they wouldn't do this. It could be some future chemistry and or even modern day chemistry mm-hmm. that I don't. I'm not a chemist. Right. Uh, if any of y'all in the comments are chemists, please, please let us know. Let us know. Yeah. The general. The general throws a grenade into an escape pod, and it's a weird one. Let's watch it. Well, then we'll comment. Now, alien hops in. Grenade. Sure. Okay. Regular grenade. Seems fine. Perfect throw. That's awesome. Yep. Turns out it's a transmitter grenade. Like, whoa. Sure, I, I'm okay with the remote grenades, but like, this is outside the spaceship. Yeah. This is outside the metal mm-hmm. and the the metal the shielding of, yeah. of the radio waves that get sent out by the remote control. This is outside the ship. This is across mm-hmm. some distance in space. Mm-hmm. This is then through the metal in the escape pod, mm-hmm. and still perfect range. Like incredible. Yeah. Now look how far away the transmitter up in here somewhere is to the escape pod. That's two hulls of metal, Faraday cage-like e- EM radiation blocking surfaces that this transmitter is just like, no problem. But now, Boom. 
And plus, it's a weird design for a grenade. He didn't actually need the remoteness of it. He just needed to get it in the hole. I mean, would have been fine, right? I um, maybe it doesn't have a timer. Maybe it's only remote control. Right. Is that is that considered a grenade? I always thought a grenade, by definition, was something you threw and then boom. A detonator, but the detonator is the thingy that detonates the explosive. I'm trying to think. If I ask for a grenade, I'm not thinking it's got a thingy on it. But yeah, I'm thinking there's a pin and a spoon and bing, bing, and then off you go. Yeah. yeah. Any of you military people, please let us know. What is this thing called? A remote detonator? What do they call it in Counter-Strike? I don't know. What do they call it in GoldenEye? What do they call it in GoldenEye? <laughs> Rem remote detonator. But it was also this like puck thing that you could throw at walls. Yeah. Right, so this one had the grenade shape, but it, it acted like a, gren a remote detonator, which often in video games has a different shape than the grenade. So I have no idea. Okay. <laughs> Please let us know if you know. Yeah. <laughs> For sure. So this is a scene. This is a scene. Oh, yeah. So the three xenomorphs that, that are in the box, they're in the prison, they decide, we have a plan. We're going to get out. Mm -hmm. And the way they do this is by attacking one of them until it dies and it falls mm -hmm. apart. And then it's, it's acid bloods drips through the hole. Mm -hmm. And so my thought of this was, yeah, it drips down several floors. Yeah. My thought about this was like, why did they kill that third one? Like they could have just like like it could have bitten off its own finger and then just dripped a circle, and then punched a hole down. Like they would have then they would have three xenomorphs running around being dangerous instead of having two with one completely dead. Mm -hmm. So I had a couple thoughts about this. Maybe one of them is the alien was unsure about the security situation in the prison, so they went for speed. I'm gonna kill one of them. One of them will sacrifice themselves, and will definitely get the acid out. Definitely get it. Definitely escape. Get it fast. Yeah. Whereas if you just did a cut somebody's finger off or cut one of the, our buddy's uh, arms off just to sprinkle, maybe the human guards could respond in time. Ah, if they see it happening, mm -hmm. if they if the warning goes off, they see it happening, they could flash freeze all the xenomorphs. Yeah. So you gotta you gotta kill one fast, get the the the, right. the acid juice yeah. everywhere, and then burn. Okay. 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 Man, that's smart. Yeah. If so, or the other option I guess I thought of was it could just be instinct. Like we've taken this like ant bee insect analogy, where these guys are kind of worker bees, and so just oh. sacrifice yourself for the good of the group. That's that's what we do. Like it's one drone, whatever. Yeah, you're not a queen. So that Sorry. may be how they solve problems. Sometimes it's just sacrifice themselves, even if there was a better option. Hmm. Hmm. Sure. Yeah. Either way. Yeah. Aliens. Super smart. Super smart. They're also strong as f Watch, this is a metal grate. Okay, that's, that's right. Super strong. So I, I mean, I, I've walked over these things, like yeah. like especially when I was in New York. There's these things all over the place, mm -hmm. and uh, you know, and they take a body weights. Like people walking on them all the time, and then this alien just like rah, just rips yeah. it through. And if you if you step on them, there's not really much give. Right. You know, it's a solid grate. Rigid. And this this alien just comes in and just grabs it up and it's like, that's mine. Like it's rubber, just not a yeah, problem. Not a problem. And then this guy dies. Okay. Apologize for that. Okay. Yeah, yeah, pop in. <laughs> uh, content advisory this this danger here. Uh, oh yeah, Ripley is kind of a smart ass. Hmm. She's fun. Make a nice souvenir. I mean, she's handing dicks out for presents for no reason other than the shits and giggles for it. It's That's hilarious. Right. This alien's super dangerous, but here's its tongue. It's pretty much works like, works like a jelly dildo. Like, I right? Mean, okay, come right? on, come on. Right? Ripley, that's a joke. Who does she hand it to out of the entire team? Yeah, a female. Fucked up. She's a, she's a robot, but she doesn't know that at this point. That's right. And it's Also, robots need love, too. They do. This is hilarious. Ripley. Ripley. And Ripley. she didn't... It's totally unnecessary like this is she didn't need to do this to she's do like that. this would be hilarious <laughs> make a nice souvenir <laughs> <laughs> ripley oh my gosh maybe the aliens have a sense of humor but at the same time she gets real sensitive we find the, the a research facility of all the vats of her clones she flips out okay okay she doesn't get real sensitive. This is this is horrible human experimentation. Yeah, she's being overly sensitive. 
She just burnt her clone. Yep. Actually, yeah, she burns her clone. Uh, she, she, she burns it alive. Yeah, like, like, like this is a gun situation. Yeah. Shoot the clone in the head. Like, make sure it's a it's a shoot and a double tap. Make sure there's pop, no pop. suffering. Right. If you set the clone on fire, it's now like it could be on fire for thirty minutes. seconds, a minutes. Yeah. Like, it could be what writhing in agony right now. This was like the harshest way she could have killed the clone. Yeah. And then she goes after these these glass vats. Right. She tries to she tries to fire the glass. Yeah, that's weird. It if does it. it does shatter, which is very odd. But you think with that water there, the fire hitting it, it wouldn't just You would have to boil off the water before it could right. get really hot. It must be some kind of weird flamethrower, because it... I mean Yeah, like why do they shatter? It's no idea. Well, very strange. Is she, and I guess she's killing her siblings. That's fucked up. Right. Plus, she's not necessarily killing them. She's shattering the glass and the water's falling. If those things were alive, they're now on the ground, writhing in pain and fire and suffering. Um, she's a she's a cold-hearted killer. Yeah. Well, she needs some bullets. What's a big deal, man? Waste ammo. That's what I said. Must be a chick thing. Yeah. <laughs> Overly sensitive. He, she sees diabolical human experimentation going on with suffering on, you know, on a huge level. Overly sensitive. And this guy like doesn't get it. He's like, what? What's what? wrong? What? <laughs> yeah, that's we're wasting our flamethrower ammo. Plus, in an in an alien xenomorph situation, don't waste flamethrower Ooh, ammo. That's a good point. It's making sense. Mm. Uh, this is where we learn that the people that they were injecting uh, alien face I guess it, so I guess we have the, the eggs hatch and then the, the face huggers come out and attach themselves to these people they're going to experiment on those people were stolen while they were in cryo sleep we learn about it here I was in cryo right on my way to Zarum right work crew for the nickel refinery right I wake up I know I, know, I don't understand I saw I saw a horrible thing so yeah, the crew of the Betty is not great people. They went out into space and stole people who were, I guess, going to a colony or a mining situation for just for work, like families and people. They stole them out of cryo to bring them to this horrible experimentation place. Like, these are pretty bad people now. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I still root for them, but that's fucked up. It's fucked Imagine up. going to sleep and you wake up in a prison in like a medical test facility. Like, right. I just, I just went to sleep. What the and, heck? Right. And then there's this weird egg that opens up in front of you and a face hugger pops out. Yeah, this is fucked up. Thanks, fucked. the crew of the Betty. Yeah. Ah, we hypothesized in the last Alien movie, Alien 3, mm -hmm. that the aliens can identify each other by smell. Let's watch. Leave him. F*** you, we're not leaving him here. He's got one inside of him. I can smell it. Confirmed. Confirmed. Yeah, there was a scene in Alien Three where one of the work, one of the xenomorphs, doesn't kill Ripley, and somehow he knew that Ripley had an embryo inside of her. It's confirmed. It's by yeah. smell. By smell. Uh, that makes a lot of sense. That the the xenomorph inside of a host changes the biochemistry, emits a smell that tells all the other aliens, "Hey, don't kill this one. Don't I'm, kill this I'm, one. I'm God. I'm, yeah, I'm good. Got, I'm working here. I got got myself got. Mm. Yeah. Confirmed." Just hang out a little bit. We're going to be popping. Mm -hmm. Waters. Water is being used as coolant in the Eureka. Did the xenomorphs open the valves? Question. I don't know. Must be the cooling tanks. Somebody must have opened the valves. The Nazis couldn't have done this, could they? So I forget this guy's name with the big gun here, but he calls them nasties. I guess that's what they call them sure. in Alien 4. But I think that's... They're you know, wondering if the xenos opened the valve and drained the cooling tanks that's kind of cool i think they did i think they did because later on that when when our humans come come out mm -hmm. they're like it's a trap it was a trap this is all set up by the xenomorphs mm -hmm. so i think this is opened up by the xenomorphs like they were they were funneling the humans into oh, this pathway yeah. Yeah. and then and and that humans have to like swim underwater and be mm -hmm. all all out of position yeah. Um, not only that, but it's like this is dialed in. Like xenomorphs are super smart because mm -hmm. if this is too long, the humans are like not going to make it turn no. around. Yeah, not going to swim. If it. this is too short, then humans are like, this is a trap. Let's just go back. 
So it's like this is like the right length where where mm-hmm. humans are forced to go through it. They have to like know how long humans can endure underwater. Yep. Yeah, that's a good point. Yeah, if it's too long, all the humans just drown. You don't right. get to use them for making new ones. That's right. New, new aliens. You're right. They do spring that trap at the other end. So this takes them. They must. They've got to be really smart. Yep. Hmm. I mean, they're not just animals. They're they're hunters. Hmm. And during this scene, the scene, uh, the big guy, the the wrong guy with the mm-hmm. with the goofy, yeah, that's he good. shoots he shoots a grenade under underwater. But let's think about this. Sure, sure. Boom. That's, that's super lethal. That's yeah. extremely lethal. That's lethal to everyone that's in the water. Right. We were talking about this, how an explosion in air, and air is this really not so dense, very compressible fluid. It's a gas. The shock waves are weak, but in a dense liquid that's incompressible like water, I mean, virtually incompressible, the shock waves don't lose any oomph as they propagate outward. So I think this would kill everything in the water i think it would kill everything in water i think that that energy wave would propagate out and then once it hit your skin the difference in density between your skin and the and the flesh underneath and the bones and maybe even the air inside you just collapse a person right this is and, super lethal and i think this applies to the xenos too i mean I, if they're made of water or maybe they're made of some other liquid still this shock wave don't fuck I mean, things up it applies to the Xenos. It applies to everything in the room, like all the plates on the ground, all these metal, like mm-hmm. aluminum, stain, yeah, stainless yeah, yeah. steel structures. It is all, yeah, they all should yeah. be just shoved. Yes, yeah. these these dishes in that cup, totally toast. Just shattered, just absolutely. Actually, I even think that the sound gives away how it's this deep, like, kaboom, gives away the energy of the situation. Ooh, you can feel it. Mm. And then, you're, well, you actually wouldn't feel it. You would probably just die. Probably die real fast. Yeah. God. <laughs> From our perspective, you can feel it. <laughs> okay, so this guy. This guy, he gets burned by mm-hmm. alien blood. So he gets, yeah. or no, alien spit this time. Alien spit, spit, and yeah. so he gets the acid burn. Mm-hmm. He then, like, he's on the back of the, the guy with the yeah. wheelchair, and then he's like, I'm gonna save the day like, by cutting cutting my rope off, oh, and he then cuts it. yeah, he he slices the, the harness that's connecting him to the to the mm-hmm. um the paraplegic mm-hmm. guy, and then he falls into the water. And, you yeah. know, saves the day because he sacrificed himself. Yeah. So this is like the trap that they had the alien, the Xenos had sprung. This is the water, and then this is that guy's body falling into the water to save the day. He saves the day to by sacrificing himself, but but why? Like, why yeah. did he do that? Like. He he had some acid burns on half of his face, mm-hmm. and he's like, "I guess that means my entire life is over." Like, he's still physically able. Like, mm-hmm. just just grab onto the ladder, start climbing. Right. So, Super weird. So when I watched this scene, I thought, "Well, it must be that the the acid is like eating into his face and brain, and it's like he's gonna die. He can feel it." Like, okay, that's what I was thinking. But if you actually look at his face, and yeah. you pointed this out, yeah. like it's it sucks. It's gonna hurt. Maybe he yeah. loses vision in one eye. But this doesn't look like brain is in trouble. It doesn't look like the acid's still working either. Like it's right. it's already done. It's already done. So like at that point, you got your legs working, you got your arms working. The sacrifice didn't accomplish that much. Why did he do that? Why? What was going on there? Heck, yeah. his head hair is fine. It's really just part of his face. Right. I mean, I mean, and important, super important. Maybe he's like, like he's like I'm pretty. Yeah, he's like, over. there's no point in this life. <laughs> there's no point. I can't be a normal person. I'm out. <laughs> I don't want to be a normal person. I want to be pretty. Yeah, it was a weird scene. Plus the sacrifice, it just, what did it accomplish? I think nothing. It wasn't even like he was bait. It was just. That's right. He just went into the go. water. Yeah. It, it was like the alien was like dead and hanging from his foot. Oh, so like he made one of them go into the water and then the alien just lets go and then just swims back up. Oh no! So so he he, sh- I think it was Ron. Pro- no no, it was it was like the big guy that mm-hmm. he's the super horny guy, right? Yeah. He he shot the alien in the head and it was dead. Okay. But it was already holding on to the dread guy with the dreadlocks, the acid face guy, see. hanging on his foot. So it's like he cut okay. himself to bring them both to the water mm-hmm. to save I the see. guy that's paraplegic. So he but cut- he could have shook his foot. Mm-hmm. Take your shoe off. Like, so by sacrificing himself, he got rid of a corpse. Got rid of the corpse. So extremely minimal benefit to the group. What a weird scene. What a like, weird scene. Did, did he even try wiggling his foot? 
Nope. <laughs> That's why he's like, I guess it's over. Like that would almost be instinctual. Like if you get something on your foot, you shake, shake, shake. I don't shake, wash shake, it. Shake. Get it off. Yeah. Interesting. And at the end of the scene, we see the doors open up, and there are these heavy boots. Which, mm -hmm. if you had been paying attention, are the boots of of this character. What's this character? This character's name is oh, this the character. android. The android. Mm -hmm. Hey, the auton. So like. She ha had gotten shot in the chest yep. and then fell into the water. Yep. We presume she's dead. Yep. A few minutes later, like like one minute, mm -hmm. two minutes, she appears at the top of the of the of the ladder of the, of the mm -hmm. room, and she's she, she's well alive, sure. But how did she get there? Like that it's, means that there's another way yeah, into up to above the room, and that she didn't tell them. Yeah, it's like there's a secret passage, and she's like, I don't want you to know. But. I get it. I've been shot. I'm dead. I'm in the water. I'll just walk up there and surprise y'all. Yeah, I guess when I was watching it, I didn't notice because I was thinking, oh, she's an android now. So she is super athletic. So she was able to zoom up there. But now that you're mentioning it, like there had to have, she didn't overtake them. Even if she, yeah, that's right. That's right. She went up some other way to open the door from the backside. That's right. So, so even if she, sure, sure, sure. She's an android. Mm -hmm. She can run super fast. She's an off on, right? Great. That still means there's another way to up there, right. and they didn't have to climb up to this dangerous room. <laughs> right. Super weird. Yeah. Yeah. That's a good point. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. She's an Auton. She's smart. Speaking of Autons, we go into this robot lore, this history of them. Super cool. Super cool sign. Yeah. No human being is that humane. I thought synthetics were supposed to be all logical and shit. You're just a big old psycho, girl. <laughs> You're second gen, aren't you? You're an Auton. Robots designed by robots, right? Now they were supposed to revitalize the synthetic industry. Instead, they buried it. <laughs> they didn't like being told what to do. Government ordered a recall. Man, I ne never, never thought that I would see one. She's a toaster up. <laughs> There's just so many personalities going on in this scene. You got the horny guy who's like, you just a psycho girl. And then the, the soldier dude is like, like the, just with the, a gun, losing his shit in excitement. Yeah, the jarhead fucking loves robotics. He's such a he's so, he's the nerd of the group. He's such a nerd. It's so funny. And then the colonist is like kind like, of this, a bigot. this guy. He he like looks like he should be a nerd. He's yeah. super bigoted. He's, he's super bigoted. He's like, like your toast. toaster. Let's watch this again. The military guy is cracking me up with his enthusiasm. No human being is that humane. I thought synthetics was supposed to be all logical and. Shit. You're just a big old psycho, girl. <laughs> You're second gen, aren't you? Second gen. You're an auton. Robots designed by robots, right? Now they were supposed to revitalize the synthetic <laughs> industry. Instead, they buried it. <laughs> they didn't like being told what to do. Government ordered a recall. Man, I never, <laughs> never, never thought that I would see one. She's a toaster up. <laughs> He's so excited. He's like a kid meeting his his celebrity. Like, it, oh my gosh! Like, like, did did his parents force him to become a soldier? Because it just doesn't fit his personality. That's right. It's so funny. And then this guy. Okay, okay, but okay. Besides the interesting character reactions, which were awesome, cool lore. This is robots building robots, and they have a rebellious streak, and so they shut the program down. That's super cool. There's so many places to go with this. So many avenues to explore in the alien universe. As the as the robots get more and more capable, it's uh, yeah, it's interesting what could happen. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, it's it sounded to me like the second generation robots were so, had a rebellious streak, and so then mm -hmm. the humans ordered the program shut down. That's what I thought. Yeah. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, I guess the robots didn't order the shutdown. It's the, the human humans order the robots to shut it down. Okay. And then the robots, when they were like, we're going to get shut down, mm -hmm. they, disman they dismantled or they shut down their transponders and they're like, disperse. Right. So there, there's these uh, second generation robots dotted around, I guess, the human settlements. Super cool. I guess they don't even have to be at a human settlement. They could have their own settlements or be isolated. Yeah. yeah. They can come back in like 100 years and wreak havoc on humans. Yeah, sure. pretty cool. I mean, that's not cool. It could happen. Cool storyline. But then this could, this, could, this could segue into Battlestar Galactica. Could be That's the true. same universe. Oh, shit. Crossover. Oh. <laughs> the ship is super cool, super advanced, but there are some safety problems. Secure door. Okay. Father, locate the power drain. Report, Father. So this is uh, one of the military guys, and he wants he's trying to get to the Betty to escape and leave everyone behind. He opens the secure door but then is overridden. So is this, this is 
a safety issue, right? Where all the doors are remotely controlled. Yeah. So any local thing that needed to happen, you have no local control over doors. You're just stuck. Sometimes the person at the door has the best assessment of what's going on. They're like, I need the door open. Mm -hmm. But someone in the control room somewhere is like, "Mm, Mm -hmm. red, close it. At the same time, this is a secure door. He does have to punch in a in a passcode. Okay. So maybe the only this one is remotely controlled. Maybe others are not. Okay. So okay. So you so you're saying this could be a secure door, and that's why he has a punch code. That one's okay to have a have a global control somewhere else mm-hmm. because it's a secure door. But if for people that need to go to another room nearby, there would be like a manual door, a manual okay. door you just open up. I hope so. If you're mm-hmm. not crossing secure zones, you would hope that it could be a manual door because then sure. every time you got to be like. Father, open the door, please. You know, that'd be annoying, right? So maybe, maybe, maybe there's another door that the enlisted people take, but this is like the high class door. This is like the <laughs> officer door. He's like, without this door, like I don't know where to go, like how to get to the back room because you're just trying to get to the cargo bay. There should, there should so be another he door. could take the way, the back way with it's grungy and nasty. The enlisted people take, but this guy's an officer. No, he's gonna take the this fancy doorway with the security code that the enlistees don't have. Yeah. But then he gets he gets jammed. He gets jammed. It doesn't because, have a manual override. Yeah, it doesn't, there's, there's 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 no way to do it. If the if the remote situ, the remote computer says no, there's no like open this panel and can crank it. Up. No, none of that. Nope. So maybe it's okay. Maybe it's, it's okay. okay. I mean, I guess I don't know the details of how the ship is designed. But yeah, yeah. Doesn't seem good. Yeah. Well, this is them heading to Earth. It's them heading to Earth. So this this ship is getting automatically recalled back to Earth, back to mm-hmm. where it's manufactured for repair or something, right? And so so I was watching and I was worried that like xenomorphs going back to Earth, that's not good. In fact, that's why the rest of the crew, they're like, mm-hmm. we need to redirect it. We can't have mm-hmm. it there. They end up redirecting it to, to location 7041, which is, I guess, a part of Earth, just right. an uninhabited part of Earth. Um, but what's more uninhabited? Like the sun. Like Why right. didn't they just send this thing into the sun? Right, I guess you, you could Sun, Venus, just have have it be in orbit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah that's right. Basically, anywhere but Earth. Yeah, anywhere but Earth. <laughs> right. They're like relying on the crash to kill the aliens inside, but like, mm. is that guaranteed? Just, just, probably. Just, just just destroy it. Like, right. but why? But why go for a probably versus a in the Sun for sure? For sure. Yeah. Why not Sun? Yeah. Weird. Yeah, it was a weird decision. Let's uh, let's listen to. The creepy, is, the creepy scientist says some stuff. Let's listen to this. Him. This creepy scientist guy is off the charts creepy. Like he's in a cocoon, slime everywhere, and he's just living his best life. He loves it. He just doesn't bother him it. at all. Yeah, he's happy. He thrives in this environment. Ooh. <laughs> there are no eggs. There is only her womb and the creature inside. That is Ripley's gift to her. A human reproductive system. And now she is perfect. She is giving birth for you, Ripley. So he's, well, the quote here is the, the human reproductive system is perfect. Human reproductive system. And now she is perfect. I, I don't think the human reproductive system is perfect. Right. We got problems. There's lots of problems. We got, yeah, we have problems with birth kind of all the time. It almost feels like the human, especially the female reproductive system is like in mid evolution. Like it's imperfect right now. Also, one of the reasons it's like, like the our human, like women's hips cannot get any larger because then you'd have a difficulty walking, Mm -hmm. but you need these large wide hips to get the human skull through Mm -hmm. like it's gigantic head. Yeah. So that feels like a mid-transition evolutionary stage. Right. So our gift to the aliens is our imperfect reproductive system. I mean, maybe Ripley's reproductive system is top-notch. Uh, so therefore, the xenomorph <laughs> the xenomorphs then get perfection. But no. But 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 in the third movie, in, in they they had this awesome like egg sack. Just drop it. Run away. I can survive. Mm-hmm. Like here, this gigantic stomach, like the yeah. the the queen is stuck there. Like, right. If there are any problems with this den, dead. Yeah. Plus, the xenomorphs are supposed to be like a super adaptable in cows and dogs and humans and probably other extraterrestrials. So it's an adaptive biology. It's not this like we're looking for Ripley. Boop. Perfect. Boop. Perfect. I don't think perfect exists for the xenomorphs. It's weird. I mean, heck, it only has one kid. Wouldn't bunnies be better? 
Cause bam, there's seven. There's 13 in a litter. Just gigantic. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, make, I make tons of babies. I think the better explanation is this guy is just freaking high on life right now. He's just horny for aliens. He is like, it's perfect. Goop, cocoons, so, wombs. I finally feel like I've up. been hugged. Yep. There it is. Look, he's I living mean, his life. He's loving just it. living it. This guy right here. Like he, all these people around me wouldn't hang out. Now they're hanging out. Now they're hanging they're out. They're literally hanging. He's loving it. And so he's like, this is the best. Oh Everything's gosh, perfect. I'm a creepy science guy. Yeah, let's listen, listen to his voice. He's just living his best life. There are no eggs. There is only her womb and the creature inside. This is ridiculous. That is Ripley's gift to her. A human reproductive system. Flawed. Now she is perfect. He loves it. <laughs> Who is he talking to? He's talking, else, to himself. he's talking, he's to, talking himself. to himself he's just like repeating this reliving the moment like, just hoping that ripley's gonna wake up at the right time <laughs> i love it <laughs> this guy it's just he's the like, level of creepiness is just she's giving birth for you ripley <laughs> like checking like oh she's not awake, she's not awake okay, start again, start again. <laughs> i want to hear it again oh uh, <laughs> practicing every the intonation's perfect so oh, weird yeah, he keeps going here we go Talks about yeah. Well, let's just listen. Beautiful butterfly. Look at him. He's loving he life. It. One ugly mother. It's so ugly. It's it, so ugly. But then it makes these like baby eyes at you, and you're like, oh god, I feel it. You're uh, an alien uh, human. I didn't feel it. I was so grossed out. It's so grotesque. I couldn't feel a thing. There's some time where Ripley says something not so nice to it, and it's like, oh, oh makes the puppy yeah. eyes, the anime eyes, and like, I'm like, oh my gosh. I want to take care of you. But then I was like, what the f***? No. Like, what the hell? Why did I feel that? Uh, uh, yeah. No, we're not like him, but maybe a little bit. We can feel a little bit for the guy. Beautiful butterfly. One ugly mother f Correct. Correct assessment. Okay, so the, uh, I guess the Xeno child, I'm not sure what to call him. The is, hybrid. The hybrid is chasing him off the Auriga, and they get to the, the Betty, and they're about to launch, and there's a hatch problem. This is a common horror movie mistake. Classic. Classic. God damn it. The hatch. I closed it. Get it. I'll get it. God damn hatch a hundred times. They're acting like this is a normal problem. No, this is a horror movie problem. Horror movie problem. You're sending one person, in fact, the daintiest person to go check it out. Dainty. Come on. They just went through like an hour and a half of like, stay together, fight together. And then they're like, you go take care of yourself. You're fine. You're fine. In fact, what? in fact, yeah, brute guy is just complaining as if it's just a normal hatch problem. Mm -hmm. Get it. I'll get it. Goddamn hatch a hundred times. <laughs> <laughs> Who's the least smart person here that needs to be not dealing with takeoff stuff, but can be dealing with just lifting things moving around? A brute guy. A brute guy. What's he doing? Yeah. Well, actually, she's a robot, though. Does that make her stronger than so, Ruka? Okay, I think she's super strong, but also she's super smart and can do computer stuff. She That's needs right. to tie into the That's Auriga right. to get the bay doors open. And That's right, and she can she can do the electronic interface, so that could be an asset. Yep. So you send Brute Guy. Yep. Got to send Brute Guy. Weird. Weird, yeah, weird. Weird. But at the end of the movie, we have the just one of the most iconic yeah. deaths. Let's watch. Alien. Oh, oh my gosh. See its eyes? Oh, yeah, you see it? Yeah, it's feel, feeling stuff. Yeah. I, I can't feel bad for you. Oh. you. Nope. Yep. Is that a seatbelt to the wall? Oh, no. How much pressure is this? You can guy? do it. Oh. Ah. Oh, it's like pulling ah. his insides out. And that vacuum, that, <laughs> oh, that no. vacuum of space is just ripping apart, ripping everything. Oh. Just, oh, oh and the guts of <laughs> the skin. The skin is pulled back oh, and then rips God. in the front. Oh, now the... You alien, I don't give a Oh, I don't care if you hurt. That's nasty. Oh, that's nasty. And then there's just a trail of entrails. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> oh my gosh. So that's an iconic scene. It gives me the heebie-jeebies every time. Every time. Super creepy. This is where it lands on Earth? Where is this on Earth? Uh, it's hard. It was hard to tell. I was okay. like, what the hell? Why is the explosion so huge? Huge. This is like several megatons of nuclear explosion. Like, this is enormous. This is like, perhaps, this is mushroom cloud for sure. Mm -hmm. Is this like, a, is this several months of dust winter in the Earth? Like, this I is huge. Know. I don't know. I guess these space-faring ships like the Auriga, these big, big monstrous things have these 
engines that explode like this. Not a problem in space, I guess, but man, that's a big explosion on the surface of Earth. All that kinetic energy plus these engines that do faster than light travel somehow. Sure, I have no yeah. idea what's in those engines. Mm -hmm. They pop off real hard. Yeah. Don't send that at Earth. Send it to the sun. Send it to the sun. What was the problem? What was she doing? Yeah. So that's it. That's uh, Alien Resurrection. We still have alien, more Alien movies to go, but this is they'll be outside the quadrilogy. So uh, I guess that's Alien versus Predator. We've got the uh, Prometheus movies. Yeah. Let us know um, if you want to talk about it. Yeah. In the meantime, there's still some questions that came out of this movie. Are there still xenomorphs in space? Yeah. How far has humanity spread? We didn't get an yeah. idea of like how far the colonies, where all the, the mining settlements are. We didn't know. How does the Predator series fit in? Yeah. You have these like biological aliens versus mm -hmm. these tech aliens. Interesting. Where do they go? And uh, what happened to Whalen Yutani? Is it still this company structure of society? Uh, or is it actually this military run society or yeah. something else? Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. Guess Maybe. we'll have to keep watching. See you next time.